Hey guys, it's here bringing you a, another video and a welcome to a patch note video. So this is patch 13.6 already. Um, I am recording this as the patch notes, as you can see there, came out 22 minutes ago. And I will be uploading this tonight. So if you appreciate that, please do throw a like on the video and let me know what you think about the patch down below. So, don't think it's a very big one. Um, which, I don't know, is a bit weird. <clears throat> but to be fair, they have done a lot of changes recently, so maybe they're trying to let the dust settle a bit so they're not trying to stir up the game because i'd imagine maybe not this patch but maybe a couple patches time is obviously going to be the msi patch so they probably want to collect a lot of data to then try to balance the game well around msi so only three champion nerfs and that is unsurprisingly to two of them uh aurelian soul viga and yumi doi uh and then buffs to ash galio talon and vane I have heard about the vein buffs and they're very peculiar, so we'll go over that as well. And then Mundo is getting an adjustment. We do have more system changes though. So we got Bloodthirster, Dragons or Drakes, depending on what you call them, Legend Bloodline, Lethal Tempo, Nash's Tooth, and Navori Quick Blades. And then a lot of new skins uh, because it's the Fairy Queen event. But we also have the new champion, Milio. Now I will say, uh, I obviously was in the dev meeting to Milio, but I didn't go on the PB to play him which I don't honestly know why I didn't. Norm normally, we do. Normally, we go on the PB and give him a go. I actually do not know why this time I didn't do that for a new champion. I think partially I've just been such in my kind of rhythm of my ranked stuff. I just didn't really, I don't know, find time, but I, I probably should have, but anyway. Um, so yeah, new champion Milio. If you don't know about the champion, I did do a whole video covering him. If you want to check that out, you can find it. He's pretty cool though. He he from the feedback that I have seen about Milio on PBE, people are relatively okay with him. Um he is a more bare bones back to basics enchanter, uh which actually is a bit of a breath of fresh air because like the last enchanter technically was Renata and even though I like Renata, she's a bit overtuned in several aspects. Where Milio seems to be strong but only in one aspect. Um which is a bit of a difference compared to a lot of newer champions. But his ultimate is pretty damn good. Obviously, removing CC from everybody that he hits with his ulti is going to be very effective in modern day league. So, yeah, I'd expect him potentially to be a meta pick. Um, and I don't think, like, well, depending how his balance goes, I see him blending in really well with league. And I could see him just being a normal enchanter pick that people are going to play. So, first one is Ash. So last patch, Ash was nerfed for support and the goal was to preserve her power level as AD carry. We were mostly successful in hitting these goals, but she's still a bit worse off. So we're making good on that promise. So the passive damage against frosted enemies, they are simply increasing it to 115% to 110. It is interesting to me that Riot aren't wanting just to annihilate um, Ash support. You know, I, I think they have seen that people have enjoyed the pick so they don't want to destroy it but they are trying and listening to the well the older play style of of ash and probably the majority well i, I say that majority of ash players you really don't see many ash ad carries but you still see a fair amount of ash uh, supports because let's not beat around the bush ash support, ash support is very easy you press w and occasionally arrow it's very effective so for people that were like, no, 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 I like AD carry, I think for them just to get a bit of love, I think is a good thing. So overall, that's just a little extra little damage buff, which obviously as a damage buff for a carry orientated Ash is very good. Aurelian Soul. Uh, so again, still a little bit crazy. Uh, his kit, and I, I will say fundamentally, he has a strong kit. And I've always said the stronger the kit is, the harder it is to balance. Um, because if you're not willing to change the kit, you then have to absolutely annihilate their numbers. It's why things like Viego, even though I still, and I've even seen today of me playing ranked or Viego's pop off, they've had to nerf him to a state that hopefully pro play doesn't play him. Because when you combine an insane kit with okay stats, pro play with it, with, you know, the faintest scent of it being okay, they will play it like without any hesitation. And obviously Aurelian is that since his rework. So E, uh, which obviously is his AOE execute, all that, uh, is going to 12 seconds all ranks, so it's technically just a nerf um, across the board. And then the ultimate, kind of the big thing. Um, so the Stardust requirement for the big ult was 75. Every 75, you got the big, big ult. It's now every 100, so it's a nerf. 
and the duration the stun duration is now only a second not 1.25 seconds the cast range is going down 150 range the knock up of like the big ultimate when it's the big ultimate it does a knock up that's going down to a one second knock up instead of 1.25 and the cast range of it also is again going down 150 so well i think basically the normal one does a stun and it's that cast range the big one is a knock up um so they are just nerfing it pretty much across the board it's still doing the damage it does but it's just being less powerful in terms of like utility and i think that's fine it is still going to be probably quite strong mundo so the good doctor has been feeling a bit under the weather in uh, early game but on the other hand, he turns into a surgeon of death come late game. We're turning Mundo in a way that should help smooth out his power curve throughout the game with also giving him some medical tools to help him in the jungle. OK, so health regeneration is going up, uh, but the health, well, early health regeneration is going up. but The scaling is going down, but you, that's fine because you'll get items that probably kind of later in the game, you get items that make up for that. The recast timer for W is going down, so better for trades and all that. And then damage to monsters for his E is going up 50%. I don't think this is going to do a whole lot, but as they did say, they probably need to be careful because we all probably have seen Mundos get to late game and they have, they've had very lackluster early games and then they are unstoppable in late game. Galio, literally one of the forgotten champs of League. The problem that Galio is going to have, and I, I don't know what they're doing here and I don't want to spoil it, I don't know. He doesn't do any damage. Um, so he is an anti-carry, not a carry. He's a protector, not a carry. And other champions simply do it better. So one champion, and obviously, no, I know Galio's niche is he jumps on a target to protect them. But Malzahar, as an anti-carry, does everything basically Galio does, but better when you're grouping. So there's a Master Yi on the enemy team. Malzahar is much more effective about shutting down that Master Yi than a Galio is. That's the thing. So... Let's see what they do. The only thing I think they could do to make him meta is make him do more damage. W, Shield of Durand, uh, Magic Damage Reduction. So he's taking less damage reduction type of thing and also less physical reduction. So they're making him tankier when he's holding down his W. That's not more damage. And then his E, Justice Punch, they are reducing it by one second. Yeah, that's not going to do anything so like even here i've just seen galio's been stuck in limbo recently and not fun part uh, and not the fun party whatever after this patch he doesn't deal enough damage to threaten carries by himself but he's also not durable enough to survive multiple spell rotations so we'd rather buff up his beefiness than make him a burst mage so that's that is why so like even though i'm i was confused they are they are doing this on purpose instead of damage like he needs damage but they're not doing that on purpose. They're making him more of a tank. Still is going to do nothing. You, you, even the tankiest of tanks in League, think of the tankiest tanks who are meta. They all do damage. Literally every single tank that is meta and is strong, Scion, Orn, any of those, both are tanky and do damage. Galio, well, he's tanky, not really, and he doesn't do damage. So it's just not a good situation. Talon, champion, you really don't see that much. Um, but, and this is where I do say but, in my opinion, it's healthy for the game for there to be waves of popularity with champions. To me, it's really boring when one champion is always really popular. You have to remember that not even that crazy long ago, Talon was like the jungler to go, like a year ago, maybe not even. He was the jungler to go. So many people climbed just by spamming Talon jungle that when they nerfed him and made him not obviously the the thing to play i'm okay with him being out the spotlight for a while obviously the people that hate that are the one tricks or mains because they just stay on that champion but for the average league of legends player i think it is better to have peaks and troughs of popularity and strength but anyway um so they are giving him more mana his passive bleed presumably uh, is doing more base damage based on your level and has a 10% more bonus AD scaling. The rake of the W, mana cost is cheaper, so that's it. They're not doing anything more, probably because, again, he was the thing to play not long ago, so they don't want to make him the thing to play again. Like, Because it very easily could just be from, oh, he's not playing anymore, to, oh, everybody's playing Talon again. So, yeah. 
Um, so they're just basically saying here, this is more for mid lane, and because of his mana costs, it's he struggles. But Jungle Talon has fewer mana issues, so it shouldn't affect him. So there you go. Vayne. So yeah, the this is the thing that I, I have heard is very, very weird of what they're doing. Basically, Vayne... Well, they're making these changes about mainly AD carry Vayne, but everybody has basically agreed the this is only going to make her a nightmare in top lane and i can see here we want to curb her power in top lane so we're bringing down her percent health damage as well but she builds kraken and blade of the ruin king the, the fact that her w also does that is just semantics like she builds two items and like if that is if she's building kraken she could obviously build a shield bow but most veins i see build kraken Kraken, Blade of the Ruin King, and any damage she extra does from her W, she's going to melt tanks or top laners. So making it so that her Q is more powerful is scary and more movement speed. So this thing is going to be nuts for top lane. So what is the passive movement speed? So Night Hunter for Vayne is when Vayne is running towards an enemy champion, she gains movement speed, where before it was 30 movement speed, it's now 45. In top lane, where she's going to be running off the melee champions and they're running away most of the time, she's just going to be able to stay on them easily because she's running at them. The Q, bonus uh, bonus physical damage, is a huge buff, by the way. Like, massive. So Q max, by the way, now on Vayne. Don't max W, max Q. Because it's now, instead of an 80% AD ratio, it's 115% bonus AD ratio. The attack, the empowered duration that you're getting a, a big a window to hit the auto attack has gone down. So it was seven seconds. It's now three. But when you're trading in top lane mainly, that doesn't matter. But then the W, oh, you know, they're big nerf. They've nerfed it by 2% of max rank. This makes up for that. And again, she still builds items that murder tanks anyway. Ooh, so if you are a top lane main, potentially Vayne is going to be on your ban list this patch. And I'm going to just call it right now. You're either going to see a hotfix nerf in a couple of days to nerf this. Or next patch, Vayne will be nerfed. That, I, that is my guess already. Is It's going to go really badly for top lane. She's going to get nerfed again very soon. Because that is a really bad idea. Vygar. Base health decrease. The base armor decrease. And W base damage decrease. So, <clears throat> you know, they just gave Vygar buffs. Why are they nerfing him? Because it was a bit too strong. Giving Viga more freedom by giving him more range by farming with Q and W only made Viga a safer hyperscaling late game carry. Typically, if you're playing a, a hyperscaling late game carry, you're supposed to be very vulnerable in the early game, but giving him huge range with his Q, especially his Q, just let Vigas just go, I don't need to go near my opponent at all in mid lane and you know you could be playing against something that's supposed to kill you and they couldn't because Viga's like I'm over here bye so they are making him squishier they are making him squishier with less armor and they are making his W do less damage in the early game because his wave clear was okay so, so yeah with great range comes great responsibility or power uh, Viga is standing tall in mid lane but even taller in bot lane uh, with his huge spike in popularity, he's actually become a relatively common bot laner with extremely high win rates. Unfortunately, we can't have him uh, be head and shoulders above the competition. Haha, <laughs> I get it, short joke. So we're cutting him down to size, get it, short joke, by reducing his all uh, early all-in power. So why are they mainly focusing armor, not magic resist? Because they're fine with Vigar mid. He's supposed to be a mid laner. But him having less armor is making him more vulnerable to AD carries specifically. So that's what they're doing. Fair enough. Look how many nerfs this is, by the way. This is crazy. So, Yumi. Um, part of me just doesn't even want to cover this champion because, like, she's just bad for League. All I will say, and I've said it in commentaries and I'll say it here, I think there will come a time, and I, well, I don't know if there will, but there should come a time that I think Riot just has to admit she was a bad idea for the game. She was. You can't have a champion be completely like locked in and immune and have the power that she has like that's the thing and yes they've changed her and all that stuff practically like her rework made her stronger than she was before and the whole best friend mechanic like 
I've seen, I'd say about a 50-50 split with Yumi's now. That And, you know, I'll say most of the time she's just banned. But when she's not banned and I've seen her, I'd say 50% of Yumi's stay with her AD carry. Where before it probably was like 10% of Yumi's stay with her AD carry. But still 50% of Yumi's will abandon their AD carry and go jump on a cane or an echo or something. I still see that happen and it's still very strong. Um, but to me, like, it's the basic thing of Riot and... You know, we've seen reworks and that. And usually when reworks happen, they're trying to fix a champion for what their problems were. I've never seen Riot muck it up so badly that the whole community completely agreed. Even Yumi mains agreed the unhealthy playstyle of Yumi was her AFK only stay on a champion playstyle. That's what everybody agreed with. It's like, oh, yeah, that's awful. Like for any skill expression to Yumi, you should be able, you know, you should have to pop off every now and then to get any kind of benefit. And the good Yumi players before the rework would occasionally pop off, do the auto attack, get the shield, the mana thing, and pop back on. They removed that. So there is no incentive for a Yumi to jump off their target ever. Like, it literally doesn't exist. So they basically made the playstyle that everybody hated, the AFK playstyle, the default playstyle for Yumi. The only playstyle for Yumi. It honestly is the most confusing thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, I do, I literally don't even get how they do that. Like, whew, that is just weird. So they are doing some nerfs. So the Q cooldown is being flattened to 6.5. Um, so yeah, um, it's technically a buff in the early game, but then is a flattened nerf at max rank. Mana cost of it is going to be more expensive for rank 2 onwards with a lot more mana cost at rank 5. The speed of the missile is going down. The enhanced speed of the missile is going down. And the max range in a straight line is going down. Ultimate, overheal shield duration. So it was 3 seconds to 1.5. So this shield will last the full duration of the spell, 3.5 seconds, plus the amount of time. But they are removing the best friend bonus resistances. They are just getting rid of the bonus resistances that she gave. All I will say, like, if you enjoy Yumi, all power to you, but I don't think anybody would... I, even I think Yumi players, if they really deep down had, uh, like, thought about it, no one thinks she's a good thing for League. Like, she's unhealthy for the game. You may enjoy playing her, and that's fine, but she's not good for the game. And I, I, I've i said before, like, there's 160-plus champions in the game. They're not... All, all 160 cannot be good for the game. I wish Riot just would admit that, and... They've even tried to rework it and it's gone bad. And its I knew it was going to go bad. Remember when they did that kind of reveal going, oh, we're reworking Yumi, here's what we're going to do. Hey, we're going to do everything that you guys don't want and don't want us to do. And we're going to make sure we keep that W mechanic. I said in that video, as long as you keep the W mechanic that she can latch on things and either you can't forcefully pop her off or that just that that, that exists, she's never going to be good for the game. And look what's happened. They've tried to rework her and she's a complete and utter mess. Just, uh, it's not worth it. It really isn't. Items. So, yeah, AD carry's got a little bit too strong uh, from the buff. And I, I said that, I, I did say, like, they're buffing an AD carry role that I would have already considered strong. Like, when they buffed AD carry, it was already the second strongest role in the game. It still is the second strongest role in the game. Jungle is the strongest. But, like, it, why would you buff the role that is second strongest? That makes no sense. But anyway, Bloodthirst set, the shield of it is going down. So it was 180 to 100. It's now 450 uh, to 400. So a lot of AD carries or sub-AD carries, especially Draven and stuff, are building Bloodthirst at first. And with a crazy big shield and lifesteal and everything, they just weren't dying. So that is a bit of a nerf to that. Uh, Nash's Tooth, obviously not an AD carry one, but um, they are making it more expensive. They're changing the recipe for it, but also because they're making it more expensive, giving it a bit of ability haste. So there's that. Ivory Quick Blades. So it used to be a cooldown reduction on auto attacks for your non-ultimate abilities was 15% of remaining cooldown. It's now 12. So again, nerfing that. Uh, Legend Bloodline. Again, a popular AD carry rune because it's lifesteal. Uh, was a 0 0.4 per stack is now 0 0.35 and that maximum it used to give um, a max health at 15 stacks was 100 it's now 85 
lethal tempo again being nerfed attack speed for ranged users was 30 percent to 54 percent max at level 12 it's now 24 to 54 so and that's max at level 18 so it's it's weaker early game and you're not getting the actual benefit of it until level 18 instead of level 12 so that is a nerf so there's that dragons so i've always said because some people are like how do you make jungle less influential in the game i actually have said in the past nerf dragons because that is a big reason why jungle is so influential because the game of like nowadays really goes around dragons and objectives and that's the jungler's job whichever jungler is doing better gets all the objectives but if the objectives aren't as strong they won't make as as big of an impact in the game so if your jungler isn't doing as good and oh we didn't get the objectives well at least the objectives aren't as powerful the problem that you've got is will this actually do anything that they're nerfing some dragons and stuff and they're nerfing the stats that you get from them arguably no because because of the launch of elemental dragons a couple years ago and because jungle has been that primary role forever well since then um the game fundamentally and the player base fundamentally at least here on eu west i don't know if it's the same everywhere but here on eu west the game is about dragons like whichever team gets the dragons will win the game like that is just the way it is because it's the team that prioritize teamwork they work out together they get the dragons they then group and it's just kind of works that way the team that your jungle is ignoring the dragons they nine times out of ten lose the game because they just don't have that urgency they don't have that teamwork so even though the dragons are weaker generally if you're the team that isn't really going for the dragons you're the team that's probably going to lose so hextech dragon the bonus ability haste and attack speed you're getting is going down from nine percent from for one stack of it if you manage to get all four you got 36 percent. it's now 30 percent. and then the hextech soul for it was a 45 percent uh slow it's now a 40% slow and 5% uh, nerf both for melee and range, decaying over two seconds. Infernal Dragon, uh, they are nerfing how much you get by 1%. So bonus AD and AP was 6%, it's now 5 Um, But then obviously if you got 2, you got 12, it's now 10. 18, it's 15, 24, 20. So you have 1% 1 AD, AP nerf per Infernal Dragon uh, stack. Less resistances for Mountain uh ocean dragon also less missing health regen so just less stats in general less strength from the dragons obviously the only one that they've actually not nerfed or two actually they've not nerfed wind whatever it's called dragon and they've not nerfed chem dragon so but there we go arm adjustments uh clash build water so just to mention obviously i couldn't play week one of clash sorry about that um, I have spoken to the Clash team. Four of us have said that we, we can definitely play potentially both days. We are just waiting on full confirmation on one of the players to see what days he can play. Hopefully both of them, because I, I, I miss playing Clash and I miss making content on it. So I will be bringing back Clash content soon. Normal Q Conundrum. We're working on a few updates to improve your blind pick experience. These changes are going to affect uh, on in the night on March 31st local time. These changes will be so good you won't be able to resist tipping your hat in approval. That's oh right. This is an April Fool's thing. So be but seriously, make sure you go check out blind between April 1st and 3rd according to local dates. Okay. Let let's do a normal blind pick in these times. There's something going on with April Fools. Behavioral systems, bystander feedback reports. Players who were in a game where they were exposed to disruptive behavior but did not report themselves will, will receive a notification to inform you took action. Oh, wow. So even if someone's toxic in your game, you don't report them and they get punished before you obviously wouldn't get notified because you didn't report them. But now, even if you don't report them, you're still going to get a notification. Why are they doing this? Because still so many people will go and go, Riot, don't do anything to toxic people. Ah, even if they don't really report people, those people will still say things out loud. Now they're trying to make it so obvious of like, boom, pop up. Someone got punished. Someone got punished. Someone got punished. I'm going to be honest, and I don't know about you guys. Let me know if it's for you. Most days that I log into League of Legends, I have a behavior like someone has been punished from a report you've done when I log in. 
and I, the other day i even had three in a row i clicked i had one click to get rid of it I had another one click to get rid of it I had another one three in a row so it is happening uh competitive so we're generally happy with the new lp changes have been going but when uh, some slow uh some follow-up so lp win and loss amount when visible rank approximately and oh wow okay so they made it from if you remember when you were your visible rank was your mmr it used to be 15 lp is what the average was now, then they said oh we're making it now 22 so if your mmr is exactly the same as your visible rank you'll gain 22 lp and you'll lose 22 lp that's now going up so they're making it even better so if you're well technically better and worse because you're also going to lose more but if your lp Sorry, if your MMR is the same as your visible rank, you'll now averagely lose and win 25 LP instead. Cool. And then slightly smoothed LP loss gain values at extreme MMR and ranked disparity. So clarified the lobby tooltip for ranked duo restriction when one player's MMR is at master above. Okay, so I, I am, by the way, you know, we're in Diamond 1 master MMR quite a lot. I still see duos every now and then, and one of the players like in master promo, and I'm like... If you're in master promo and there's like two other master players in the game, this is kind of master MMR. How are you being allowed to duo? So I, I do want Riot to look into that a little bit because, yeah, there are, there do seem to be people that probably shouldn't be allowed to duo, but they're duoing. So it's a bit weird. But um, that's cool. Mystic Shop Rotation. I, I will say I'm actually going to be very... I'm hyped this patch because Ashen Guardian Shen is coming out. Hell yeah. That is probably of all the Ashen Knight skins, my favorite so far from what I've seen. And also worth knowing, Ashen Guardian Shen is the final skin in the Ashen Knight uh, skin line for now. The next Mythic thematic will be debuted later this year. Stay tuned for more information. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm happy that we're getting Shen because he's a champion that I do like and I do play. But I also vaguely remember Riot did say that the thematic of the mythic because obviously it used to be hextech skins and they were like hey, it gets a bit boring that hextech has been a thing for three four years so each year we are going to have a different thematic for mythic essence or gemstones whatever you want to call them um but obviously it's mythic essence now why have we had ash and knight now go from 2022 to 2023 and we you know we're three nearly four months into 2023 why hasn't it changed already? I, I don't know. That seems a bit weird to me. So that's weird. Um, but there we go. 32-bit um, client is going. So just to mention, I, I doubt it affects anybody watching. And that's kind of why they're doing it. On April the 4th, 2023, if you are running a 32-bit client for League, it will not work. Um, or a 32-bit window. So if you're running Windows on 32-bit, I'd imagine you've got a very old machine. To be honest, I doubt any of you do. Um, but yeah, if you're running 32-bit Windows, you won't be able to have League. Uh, you'll have to upgrade to 64, but I wouldn't panic if I was you watching this. You're probably on 64-bit. You should be fine. Um, so yeah, upcoming skins. Yeah, all the upcoming skins. Uh, Milio, although I'm excited about, and that skin I'm very excited about. But anyway, that is going to be it. If you guys enjoyed, do throw a like on the video. Let me know what you think about the patch. Not a very big one, uh, although I think most of the changes I think I, I would say are fine. The only one that does confuse me is the vein buffs. I think that is going to backfire quite a lot, personally. But anyway, that's going to be it. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace. Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace. Restore our glory to live forever. Regime, I know how to unleash eternal.